Yes, sir. Hello. It's time for the Wolf Dead podcast. Boom, it starts. Hello, Lost Tech. Yes, boom. Boom. Here she is. Hi. How you doing? Will, what's up? Apparently, Uh today Mm -hmm. is two-year anniversary of Metroid Dread. Really? According to Twitter. It's been that long? It's been that long. Oh, my God. Uh, like I'm always surprised by like the random anniversaries that like just pop up on like my explore page, and that just happens to be one of them. So uh, happy birthday, Metroid Dread! You should be able to walk now. It, it was uh, also the anniversary of uh, Endgame. No, um, I think today is the in Endgame. Today is the oh, day that Tony Stark died. Okay. Spoiler alert! No, Tony Stark's dead. Yeah. Oh, so they went in into the future like it, it, it time jumped yeah. into the future yeah okay. and uh okay. according to the the lore today is the day that he sacrificed himself to save the world from thanos cool we're all very thankful that he's dead yes <laughs> <laughs> anyway how y'all doing i forgot to bring stream labs up uh got a lot to talk about today will it's x not twitter should i ban him now yes okay banned sorry uh mushy fairy queen thank you for the two months hey guys how you doing and hey. also gamer dad Kokwi, thank you for the prime hi guys it's wolf Den podcast time but today is tuesday what does that mean what does that have to do with anything uh it's tuesday you know what that means right <laughs> no it means that Microsoft has officially oh, bought Activision Blizzard, baby. Whoa. Oh, every Tuesday, every, every Tuesday, Tuesday, you will get your uh, Microsoft Activision news. Well, actually, no, because it's done. <laughs> it's it's over. over. This we is the it. end. We did it. This might be the last time you have to hear us talk about yes. the Microsoft and Activision acquisition. We will probably eventually continue to talk about other the f- things the features that come out of this the fallout as it were but as far as the legal battle is concerned yes it is over yes is there any other countries that we need to worry about no. i'm pretty sure no I, i'm pretty we sure were the holdout no the uk was the holdout oh uh, and i'm i'm pretty sure it, it's all done as of i think friday microsoft now owns activision blizzard king okay well what does that mean for us uh, f- it means we have to stop talking about it. Yeah. Well, should we just jump into it? Or? Let's just let's just jump into okay. it. Okay. Let's just go. Microsoft has finalized the its sixty eight point seven billion dollars deal to acquire Activision Blizzard, the publisher of Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and Diablo. The Verge exclusively reported last week that Microsoft was planning to close today, October thirteenth. Uh, and now it's official. The acquisition required 20 months of battles with regulators in the UK and US, but Microsoft has closed its deal after defeating the Federal Trade Commission in US federal court and restructuring the deal to appease the Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, in the UK. Uh, we love gaming. We love games, create <laughs> I, games. I, I thought we, you were just no. saying that. <laughs> we love gaming. We play games, create games, and know firsthand how much gaming means to all of us individuals and collectively as a community. And today we officially welcome Activision Blizzard to the to sorry, we officially welcome Activision Blizzard and their teams to Xbox, says Xbox Chief Phil Spencer. As one team, we'll learn, innovate, and continue to deliver on our promise to bring the joy and community of gaming to more people. We'll do this in a culture that strives to empower everyone to do their best work, where all people, uh, where all people are welcome, and is centered on our ongoing commitment uh, of gaming for everyone. Uh, the deal is Microsoft's largest acquisition ever, far in excess of the twenty-six billion dollars Microsoft paid to acquire LinkedIn in 2016, and the seven point five billion it paid to acquire Bethesda in 2021. They own LinkedIn. Yep. I did not know that. Yep. If you ever wonder why LinkedIn sucks, that's why there you go. LinkedIn, was it ever good? It was functional. I, I, you know what it was? It was a functional website that was only for one thing. 
Yeah. And then they try to make it like an, a proper social media a, a, a website. A thing that is inherently not fun. Yeah. Finding a job. Yeah. It's inherently frustrating. Yes. So it was doomed to be just a cesspool. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft didn't make it any better. The, uh, f- this is Microsoft's biggest ever push into gaming too. And the company said at the original announcement of this mega deal that it will now be the third largest gaming company uh. by revenue behind Tencent and Sony. Um, don't mind me. All right. <laughs> don't don't mind me. Just hitting buttons. All right. Can, can you all still hear me? Thank you. There, you're good. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, what is this? Uh, that is everything they own. Th- this looks incredibly complicated. <laughs> it, it, it's neat, more complicated than it needs to be. They couldn't have put color in this. If they put color in it, I feel like I would I would, I would be able to understand well, that's, a little that's better. That's the micro. That's the Xbox color scheme. Green and dark gray i'm looking at activision and what that means and it literally is all just call of duty (laughs) it's mostly call of duty (laughs) microsoft now plans to add many of activision blizzard's games to game pass today we start the work to bring beloved activision blizzard and king franchises to game pass and other platforms says spencer we will share more about when uh you can expect to play these games in the coming months um we know you're excited and we are too Activision Blizzard made it clear earlier last week that Modern Warfare 3 and Diablo 4 won't be coming to Game Pass this year. Uh, Microsoft hasn't provided an update on Game Pass subscription numbers since announcing 25 million subscribers alongside the original Activision Blizzard deal in January of 2022. So, so look at this. Look at this chart here. Look, at literally it. everything under Activision. The first mm-hmm. thing it says is Call of Duty. Right. And then it's, oh, that's because you got Treyarch, Infinity Ward, and Sledgehammer. But then under that is all of the other studios that are also under Activision. And every single, they all have the games that they work on under it. All of them say Call of Duty. And if they don't say Call of Duty, they they do still work on Call of Duty. Yes. I know that Toys for Bob mostly does other stuff but they also do call of yeah duty. That, that was the thing call of duty was so, such a massive deal that they would pull teams off of projects they were already working on to get call of duty out every right year. activision capture studio i think that's their mocap studio it it sure is yeah uh microsoft will now add more than nine game studios from the blizzard side alone to its Xbox Game Studios, alongside Game Studios in more than 11 locations for the mobile gaming king side of the acquisition. Microsoft has also uh, transformed into a publishing powerhouse after the acquisition, with more than 8,500 Activision employees now joining Microsoft. Activision Blizzard CEO and notable idiot Bobby Kotick (laughs) will remain in place uh, with the transition until the end of 2023. I have long said that I am fully committed to helping with the transition, says Kodak in an email to Activision and uh, Blizzard employees today. Phil has asked me to stay on as CEO uh, reporting to him, and we have agreed that I will do uh, I will do that through the end of 2023. We both look forward to working together on a smooth integration of our teams and players. I find that hard to believe. Yeah. That Phil has asked me to stay on. I think Phil has asked me to stay on until the end of 2023. Yeah. Because that's when the deal is you know like w- when all of the loose ends can be tied yeah when they can like properly merge everybody in under the microsoft umbrella yeah, yeah. so uh, I don't think, like they don't need him for that there's there was definitely some wheeling and dealing on codex end yeah to stay in the picture this is something we kind of expected although i did fear that he would stay on for a little longer than yeah than, than he I needed think, to you know till the end of the year is I mean, best case scenario is like he gets kicked to the curb as soon as the deal's done. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it could be worse. Jazim in the chat says, Phil asked him to stay on until he can fire him. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Basically. Also, a little off topic, but uh, jo- Je- Jeffrey Sorensen says, Metroid Dread was released on the 8th of October, which is true. That's also the day the OLED switch came out. Oh, yeah. Which means that it's the two-year anniversary of my OLED switch burning in. There you go. <laughs> Uh, on Friday Microsoft reiterated uh, that it is committed to the labor neutrality agreement it struck with the communication workers of America in June 2022 Uh, now more than 60 months uh, later as Microsoft has closed its transaction uh, to acquire Activision 
Uh, we affirm our commitment to our labor principles and innovative approach to union partnerships, uh, says Microsoft's Brad Smith. Uh, Microsoft remains steadfast in our support of our current and future employees in whatever choice they make about their workplace and their representatives. Workers at Blizzard's Albany, New York offices and Activision subsidiary Raven Software have unionized. I did not know there was an Albany office. Yeah, that was Vicarious Visions. Oh, okay. Yeah, they made Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, and they were going to make 3 and 4, and then uh, big dumb idiot Bobby Kodak's like, no, you're going to work on Warcraft, <laughs> motherfuckers. What, what, <laughs> was, <laughs> what was on Long Island? Uh Acclaim. Acclaim. That's, yes. Okay. They are long out of business. Yes. Long, long gone. Spankwise, thank you for the 26 months. My per- transparent blue analog pocket just came in, and now I get to watch my favorite podcast. It's a good day. Oh are you God. watching it on the transparent blue analog pocket? <laughs> you, If you tried hard enough. <laughs> we could. You could do that. Uh, also, while we're still off topic, Lord DC says, are you getting Skeletor in Warzone? You need to... Oh, I saw that. Yeah. I didn't see this. I didn't know you can get Skeletor, yeah, Skeletor in Warzone. Skeletor's coming to Warzone. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I need Warzone 3 to happen because I do not like Warzone 2 at all. Oh, that's cool. Okay, but like, can you play a Skeletor in Warzone 3? Because that, that's going to be I don't important. Think, I don't think the skins are going to carry over. All right, so then why bother? One good thing that uh counter-strike did good was that everything carried over yes. between cs1 and cs2 mm-hmm. uh everything else is bad about counter-strike it's, it's not good i don't like it <laughs> anyway uh so what does th- so we've been talking about the activision call of duty merger for a really long time yeah uh what was stopping this from happening so what was stopping it from happening was pretty much uh, the governments around the world fearing that this could create um, unfair advantages in the gaming space, particularly in America and the UK. Um, those are like the two biggest ones. And the EU. The big thing in the UK was they were afraid how this would affect uh, cloud uh, gaming in the, in the region. Uh, Microsoft's way around that was... Uh, to sell the streaming rights to any Activision games to Ubisoft. So Ubisoft will handle cloud streaming of Activision games over in the UK. Right, but, but, but here, we're pretty sure Microsoft is still handling Correct. All that. When was this approved in America? I thought they were still not fighting. That, not that long ago. I think the FTC tried to sue again, but it was thrown out because the, the courts and you know everybody pretty much already approved it. Because here, the big concern was that they would keep uh, Activision games, especially Call of Duty, exclusive to Microsoft consoles and PC. And they Microsoft went above and beyond to try to show that that's not going to be the case. And that they're signing deals with all the major console manufacturers to get Call of Duty on their platforms for at least 10 years. Right. Microsoft tried really hard to prove that uh owning all of these game companies Mm -hmm. did not give them an unfair advantage and that they would keep as many games as possible specifically call of duty Mm -hmm. they kept calling call of duty saying that they were going to have call of duty not be exclusive and they were going to keep it on other platforms for as long as possible um this microsoft ended up catching uh a lot of flack because um they were proven wrong a few times Mm -hmm. uh like with how uh well when all of those documents leaked a couple weeks ago when we got news about what their future plans are we learned that a lot of stuff coming out is going to be microsoft exclusive or at least that's what they're planning on doing especially like the bethesda stuff that was like one of the big arguments when they acquired bethesda who used to be a third-party company would put games on multiple platforms once they were acquired by Microsoft, all of their things became first party exclusive. I think we learned that there was about to be a PS5 Starfield. Yes. Yeah. And then Microsoft canceled it. We learned that Elder Scrolls 6, mm-hmm. whenever that comes out, is going to be Xbox exclusive. We learned yes. that Indiana Jones is going to be Xbox exclusive. So they are literally just trying to put Call of Duty on as many platforms as possible. Uh so that they will let this deal go through. Yeah. And it worked. Well, I think it's a big deal because I saw somewhere, how many like PS5s are there? Like 25 million or something out in the wild? There's a lot. 
over like 1 million uh, PS5 owners just have Call of Duty on their system. Only Call of Duty. Only Call of Duty. So like that's a big deal. That's the power of that system. Also, of that game. it's a good relationship for Call of Duty also because mm-hmm. uh, uh, PlayStation's the winning platform this this generation. Yeah. So not allowing the biggest game of the generation to release on the biggest platform of the generation is going to hurt to the bottom line no matter what. So yeah. uh, it just makes sense for Microsoft to put it on as many platforms as possible. It's very confusing to me and I'm sure to everybody else what Microsoft's vision is for this generation of consoles because yeah they're doing things a lot differently this this time around they don't really seem to care about console sales they're trying to just get their games on as many platforms as possible however you then have stuff like starfield where they're keeping it exclusive Mm -hmm. so i'm confused with their current business model yeah i mean i think like they're putting out the public face that like we don't care if you bought, if you play on our system or not, as long as you play, <clears throat> you know, through our services. Mm-hmm. But I think on some level they have to care about selling Xboxes because otherwise they would just stop making them. Right. So I do think another thing too, when this, when Phil Spencer talks about this deal, he often brings up the fact that the primary reason they wanted to buy Activision Blizzard King was for King, the mobile division, you know, the makers of Candy Crush. Microsoft doesn't have a big a foothold in the mobile gaming market and by acquiring king they could instead of just building something from the ground up they could just like buy their way in essentially but i don't believe that because if they wanted to enter the mobile gaming space they could have just entered the mobile gaming space they definitely did this as some sort of leverage to get activision's library of games not just call of duty you know that's what activision spends all the money on and that's what makes the most sales but you know Tony Hawk, uh, Crash Bandicoot, uh, Skylanders, Guitar Hero. Like, there's a pitfall, fucking pitfall. There's a wealth of, like, other game franchises in there that they could leverage to make Xbox exclusive. Like, there are people out there where if they hear that Tony Hawk is only playable on Xbox, they will buy an Xbox just for it. See, to me, it that excuse that they're buying Activision for the mobile games, that screams to me what Phil Spencer was saying to the executives at Microsoft. Yeah. That's him trying to justify this purchase to them because he knows how valuable Activision's IPs are and how mm-hmm. and where that and the position that that will put them in in the larger gaming space. Yeah. And that's why the uh all of the uh regulatory commissions across the world were like this is going to put them in a weird position in the gaming space but in order to sell in order to get microsoft to allow them to make a 70 billion dollar purchase with their money he had to be like we're gonna we're gonna we need mobile games are really big we're not in the mobile gaming space we want to enter the mobile gaming space so uh and i'm sure that'll help a little bit yeah but uh i think having all of these ips under their uh umbrella is going to help much much more oh definitely yeah uh the the big deal here that uh all of the regulatory people were complaining about and what we see is going to happen is that all of these things are gonna be rolled into game pass yes that's the biggest deal Mm -hmm. is that microsoft is really trying to push their subscription model and having all of these ips all of activision's ips first of all even before activision they acquired a fuck ton of studios yes all of those are part of game pass Mm -hmm. uh if you want to play those games the best deal to play those games is to get them through game pass um this now adds a lot of high profile IPs and a lot of high profile games that are going to be coming out that will be rolled into Game Pass in some way. In the UK, Call of Duty is going to be uh, under Ubisoft. Ubisoft, but licensed to Microsoft probably. No, it's Ubi- it's still Microsoft owned, but licensed to Ubisoft so that Ubisoft um, has control over its distribution in the UK. Yes, but that means that Ubisoft can allow Microsoft to put it on Game Pass. Yes. Yeah, it just yeah. it's just controlled by Ubisoft. Mm-hmm. Very weird and confusing little loophole that they're yeah. going to use. U- Ubisoft could straight up be like, no, we want to leave it on Ubisoft Plus or whatever it's called. Yeah, um, but Ubisoft Plus is available on 
Xbox. It's on PlayStation. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's on all platforms. So it'll be there. It, yeah, it'll be available. But yeah. the big deal is Game Pass. Yeah. Um, it just means that Microsoft has to pay a licensing fee to Ubisoft if they want to put it on Game Pass. Right. Just like they do with other third-party studios. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I see that happening. Here in America, it'll probably just be straight up on Game Pass. Yeah. This, when I heard about this acquisition years ago, my immediate thought was, hey, I like Game Pass. This is going to be cool because <laughs> I, I would love to... Uh, one of my problems with Call of Duty, I liked Warzone so much, but there was no way to stream it. Yeah. Uh, when I tweeted this episode, I, I uh, took a screenshot from an old video of mine where I... Uh, what did I do? I uh, made I I I I fucking put some Joy-Con looking things on an Android phone and made an Xbox Switch. Um, the only way you can get Call of Duty Warzone at the time and now to be streaming is to stream it remotely from your console. Mm-hmm. So that's what this picture is. I'm streaming remotely from my uh, Xbox that's just right next to it. Yeah. Um. So having Call of Duty be owned by Microsoft will change this. It'll yeah. it'll be finally on a streaming platform. Uh and I think that that is a good thing. Uh there's a lot of bad things about yes. this as well. Uh now we're seeing how Microsoft is handling Game Pass and they're Kind of not telling the truth when they say that you will get day one uh, exclusives on your Game Pass subscription. Yes, it's a it's a half truth. Mm-hmm. It's a half truth. We talked we talked about it a few episodes ago, and mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, thought we were wrong. And uh, I stand by it. I think that that's very stupid. Um, we could see a future where you have your Game Pass subscription. Call of Duty launches on Game Pass, but it will launch early if you pay them an extra couple of bucks. Yes. And that's, I think that that's fucked up. So this world of Microsoft holding uh, all of the IPs, all of the biggest IPs, uh, might not be that great. It's never great when one company owns everything, Mm -hmm. you know, because it it does create, you know, unfair advantage. It it, uh, prevents competition it uh, prevents uh new ideas to flourish you know because if, if one person owns everything then like nobody gets a chance for any, any, to do anything that's why the public domain exists in the first place once dracula fell out of you know once dracula fell into the public domain people were able to take it and create all sorts of new and incredible things with it yeah you know and, and it's it, i mean it's good to have multiple companies in the same space so that uh they can drive prices down, which yeah. doesn't happen that often, but that's the theory, at least. Yeah. Um, they could uh, continue to innovate instead of just sitting there stagnant. They can fight with each other over who has the better stuff. Yeah. Um, and then things just get better and better and better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we spend more and more money because we want to buy all of it. Yeah. Um, but in this case, it's looking like Microsoft is just trying to get as many cool IPs as possible. And then they're going to put them on Game Pass and then you're just going to try to squeeze as much money out of you as possible. Yeah. And I don't love that. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't love that I don't. at all. Yeah, I think when this was initially announced, I think, because it happened, the news that Microsoft wanted to acquire Activision Blizzard happens like within a month of the news that there was a lot of sexual harassment and work, oh, uh, yeah. workforce harassment going on at activision blizzard so public opinion of that company was at an all-time low and it seems like out of nowhere here comes microsoft's like a shining white knight to come in and save yeah, all the employees of activision true. blizzard because you know from this side of things phil spencer has shown that he has like a better appreciation of the people who work for him that is true i forgot about that so, it, it, yeah. it really was like they were the white knight coming to save Activision. Yeah, we're gonna, i was we're like i'm all for this around yeah that sounds good and also at the time game pass was fucking awesome yes game pass was was not that much you could also get a deal where you get it for a dollar yeah uh the only first party ip that like uh was on 
Game Pass, well, or, or that launched day one on Game Pass was Halo, and that yeah. was the way to play. That was awesome. It was you can get you could fucking get a get a uh, 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 a trial for a dollar yeah. and play the entire Halo. Uh, that was the last first party <laughs> IP that uh, you could do that with, yeah. aside from like Forza and some other small things. Um, but yeah, then uh, Redfall came out was bad. Uh, what else? Starfield uh, did some wacky bullshit. Yeah. Forza came out again and did the same wacky bullshit. So uh, I am not hopeful that this is going to be that great for us. Mm-hmm. It, 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 I don't think it's going to be as good as I uh, originally uh, had hopes for. Yeah. I for think, me personally. Yeah. I think just because Microsoft owns these uh, franchises now doesn't necessarily mean they're going to do anything with them. I mean, that's true. Activision too. doesn't do anything with half of these franchises. You know, I, I know there's been like rumor and speculation like Guitar Hero is going to come back. And Phil Spencer has said he loves um, the game Hexen and he wants to bring back Hexen. Okay. You know, which Activision owns. But I don't think that's going to necessarily happen. I mean, we're still waiting on Microsoft's Perfect Dark reboot. You know, we don't know when that's coming. All the other studios. I really want that. All the other studios that Microsoft has acquired to have taken forever to put out anything new, if at all. You know, it it just doesn't seem like Microsoft acquiring a studio has been beneficial to anyone. I don't yeah. even think to Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft hasn't proven that them owning a studio is going to help the studio. Yeah. They're trying. It seems like they're trying. Uh, the latest I heard was when the whole Redfall thing happened. Mm-hmm. They're trying to allow all of these studios to work together. Yeah, uh, and use resources where the stu- where studios do their best work, uh, and, and and basically loan out yeah. studio work to to all of their studios, which in theory would be really good. Mm-hmm. But we have yet to see any game benefit the fruits of that labor yeah Yeah, any studio benefit from Mm -hmm. using the network of uh of xbox yeah i'm trying to see a list of like the best selling franchises from from uh activision i have a list of all the franchises that microsoft now owns yeah i keep seeing that uh but i want like the biggest to least big you know i want i want right i want it in order but i have this list which is just fucking screen rant saying this is the 10 biggest franchises i don't think it's really the 10 biggest because the first one on the list is diablo i mean diablo is pretty big diablo is huge diablo diablo is like probably up there the second one's guitar hero i mean it was it was huge yeah does it still hold that same weight (sighs) against all of activision blizzard's ips there was a solid 10 years where guitar hero was was the biggest thing of yeah. all time and yeah. then it like fell off the cliff mm-hmm. and it's been 10 years since heart so. hearthstone that's pretty big that's pretty big pretty big yeah. starcraft also big but only two games <laughs> yeah and uh uh i mean this is like an esports legend so yeah. there's a lot of money to be had there yeah. too and like blizzard owned part of mlg i think they still stuff. do yeah, yeah. That, that was part of the acquisition yeah. too but mlg is kind of not worth what it used to be. Yeah. Uh, Skylanders. Again, that was like the biggest thing for five years. Yeah, a lot of this has fallen off dramatically. But like the problem is like that was all Activision's fault. Because yes. they would run <laughs> these franchises into the ground. And once they ran them in the into the ground, instead of taking a step back, realizing what didn't work, and then take their time to like build a, a proper game, they would just say, okay, you're either A, closed, or B, you're going to work in the Call of Duty mines. Or if the game doesn't have a lot of releases, it's a Blizzard game. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was another thing because that was the way Blizzard worked. We'd make one game, we support it for a hundred years, and then when we feel like it, we'll make the next game. Yeah. And then one day, you know, notable idiot Bobby Kodak said, <laughs> no, all of your games have to be like Call of Duty. Release more games every year. Go. Crack the whip. Yeah. Hey, Vicarious Visions, you just put out an excellent collection of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games. Guess what, motherfuckers? <laughs> Go work on active on uh, Blizzard games because they need to put out more games. Put skateboarding in Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> Next was Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, which uh, they also did nothing with for years. Um, I just 
I, I will never get over the fact that Crash Bandicoot, more so Crash Bandicoot, but also Spyro, were the de facto mascots of the original PlayStation. Yep. Crash Bandicoot is synonymous with the original PlayStation. And now Microsoft owns it. <laughs> yep. Yep. To me, that's like a bigger deal than Sonic appearing on a Nintendo platform. Yep. Because that was like, you know, Sonic admitted like, okay, we lost the console war. Can we play with you guys? And Mario's like, wahoo! You know, it was like, you know, water under the bridge. This is literally just Microsoft coming to the house and stealing from Sony. Uh, Sony abandoned Crash, like, very well, early on. Sony never actually owned Crash. Yeah, but they should have. They should have. Taken ownership. They should, yeah. they should have cared about it a lot more yeah. than they did. They let it slip away pretty early. Yeah. Um, I think what's weirder is that Spider-Man is synonymous with PlayStation right now. Yeah. That is weird. That it kind of is. I think that, I think a lot of that has to do with like the fact that the movies are made by Sony studios. Mm -hmm. And I think that had something to the do with the fact. The worst parts of Spider-Man. The yeah, to be clear. <laughs> are made by Sony studios. Of, yeah. Um, hey man, Craven the Hunter. It's not going to be good. <laughs> that that's kick ass. That's kick ass. I did not know that. That's kick. Yeah, he became know. an adult. He's apparently up He's... for Bond, James yes. Bond. I did not know any of that. Yeah. Have you seen uh Bullet Train? No, I heard he's in that. He's too. in that. He's excellent in that. All right, I got to So, that. like, as an actor, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Just needs to pick better movies than yes. Craven the Hunt. Um, Overwatch is another uh, uh, yeah. IP that's Blizzard's IP. That they fumbled too, because the sec Overwatch Apparently, two yeah, is stupid. Game sucks. Um, Candy Crush. Okay, that's admittedly one of the yeah. biggest games of all time. Uh, World of Warcraft. Okay, I'll allow it. Call of Duty. Yes. Yes. And that's it. That's the yeah. top 10. You know what? We also could have just looked at the map that was in this article. <laughs> um, oh, this is like everything they own. Yeah. Including Bethesda, which is also some of their biggest stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is all stuff that they that they purchased already. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what they that's some of their their biggest stuff mm -hmm. will we see anything from that stuff i think it'll be a very long time i think it's gonna be a long time it's gonna be at least a year till we start to see like the full effect of what this acquisition means um you know not just because there are still deals in place to put activision games on playstation like pre-existing but uh just to see like how well because it was a while before we fully saw the effect of the bethesda acquisition right you know Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop came out on PlayStation consoles first. And then over the year, like we didn't really get like, you know, the first true post acquisition game until Redfall, really. And that was not a good sign of things to come. One exciting thing about this could be that Call of Duty might not have to be a yearly release anymore. That was one of the things that they were talking about. Like, I think even Phil Spencer said, like, it doesn't have to come out every year. And I think because Activision pretty much made that bed themselves. They yeah. like basically created a an ecosystem where they can only survive if they put out a Call of Duty every year. But that also, you know, Microsoft is acquiring that ecosystem. They're right. acquiring the 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 basis that it has to release every year. But they're acquiring it into an even bigger ecosystem. Yeah. So they have Microsoft has the resources to reshape it to better fit the Microsoft ecosystem. Yeah, but th there's a lot of momentum that they're acquiring. So right. it would probably take a little bit for them to uh, change Call of Duty in a way that it doesn't have to release every year. Yeah. Like there'll probably be one next year. No, or there's there's definitely going to be one next year. There'll probably even be one a year after that. Yeah. Well, that uh, that maybe they could slow down. Well, because there's. <laughs> They're already working on like the next two Call of Duty games. Yeah. Like they're in the middle of it. If they just stop now, like what are they going to do? They're going to throw out like years worth of work. They really need uh, some engine work. They, yeah. need, they need to retool they need, a, they need engine work. They need like level design work. They need gameplay structure reworking. I'm playing Black Ops Cold War now because I'm just killing time before Spider-Man comes out. I played this game like 
six or seven times before. Yeah. It's the same fucking game yeah. over and over it, again. It's it's uh it's it's stupid. Yeah. It's fucking dumb. It it's uh they haven't changed anything. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time when they do change stuff, sometimes it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think Ubisoft also falls into that issue, but 100%. they have historically sometimes decided to take a year off on on Assassin's Creed to yeah, retool some stuff. They have. They took a year off, and then they came out with um, Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla, which people liked, but they were different. And then they took a break from Valhalla, and this next game, Mirage, is a back-to-basics one. So yeah. at least Ubisoft's a shitty company, too. But at least they have the foresight to see something's not working, take a step back, and recalibrate. So, I didn't realize Assassin's Creed Mirage is cheaper. Oh. Like, like it's not a full release? That's interesting. I, I, I heard that in a donkey video, so I don't know how true that is. Um, it got a... Metacritic's all weird now. <laughs> it got a 77 on Metacritic, which yeah. is not great. But I heard it's shorter... Yeah. I think a lot of that, uh, from what I've heard, uh, f- that it's it's that low because it's it's really adhered to the old style to the point where it's almost dated. Okay. So take for that uh, for, uh, as you will. Take it is, that what you will. It is $60. Okay. So I mean, games are $70 now. Yeah, so that's cheaper. People are saying 50 Where is it 50 Oh, you're looking at the deluxe edition. Oh, oh, the fucking there they they did this. Uh, <laughs> where's the regular? If yeah. I'm on the Ubisoft website. Give me the regular. Oh, um, what if you just go to like the PlayStation? Website? I'm on Amazon. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Mirage PS5, sixty bucks. Oh, it's probably deluxe. That's deluxe. It's all deluxe. Maybe digital from PlayStation? That's what I'm trying to look up now. I want to look up uh, how long to beat. Assassin's Creed Mirage. Standard edition PS4, PS5, $50. Okay. There you go. And it is 14 and a half hours according to how long to beat. The main story is 20 hours. Which, I love that. That back to basics games is that. That is a normal... That is the most I want from a <laughs> fucking triple A game yeah. is 15 to 20 hours. Yeah. I don't need any more than any that. More, yeah. Uh, you can get a bundle with Mirage and Valhalla for $100. No, thank you. I'm good. I, d- I am a little interested in Mirage, uh, but Sonic's this week, Mario's this week, Spider-Man. Spider-Man's this week. Gotta yeah. play all of those games. Yeah. When am I gonna play all of those games? I don't know. Anyway. Uh anything else we gotta say about Microsoft and Activision? I just wanna say <laughs> I I mean I think this speaks to like a wider issue. Like people were excited for Microsoft to acquire Activision. I think mm-hmm. for all the reasons we said. Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was one. Yeah. I but I've seen people go the next step. Where it's like, who should Microsoft acquire next? Oh, who should Sony acquire? No. That has to stop because, <laughs> like, that's feeding into the problem. It, it, we saw this also, like, with the movies, with uh, the movie industry. Like, Disney is acquiring Marvel and Lucasfilm, and now 20th Century Fox. Who else should they buy to, like, you know? fix or add to disney plus or whatever and that's not a sustainable business model at all no as we are currently seeing with embracer group who just bought everything and is now hemorrhaging funds and shutting down studios and laying people off left and right i'm uh willing to say that uh i'm not a fan of the disney acquisition of of star wars I'm willing. To, I'm willing to say now that I don't like that. I think <laughs> I want it. I want. I wish there was no more Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do too, but for different reasons. Okay. <laughs> we'll leave okay. it at that. Um, yeah, I think people f- have this in their mind that, like, you know, 
the the big ship is going to come and save everybody but really the ship just wants you to go work in the in the furnace room you know yeah shoveling coal into the furnaces so the ship can move yeah so remember when all this stuff uh, felt niche and like uh uh and then like underground and like not a lot of people were buying into it and yeah. playing all these games and stuff and yeah. now all of a sudden uh it's multi-billion dollar multi-hundred billion dollar industry yeah yeah i remember when you know back in the day you know our parents used to be like you should stop playing them video games you're gonna rot your brain now they turn on their like um financial new stuff oh did you hear microsoft you in- should get into esports yes <laughs> Apparently, it's a billion-dollar industry. What you do is you send your tapes <laughs> over to them. Why don't you announce Fortnite? <laughs> do that. You make a lot of money. Because that's also a slowly crumbling send company. Send your tape in to Fortnite. <laughs> anyway. Who did Fortnite just announce as like a new character that I'm... Oh, Michael Myers is coming to Fortnite. How is that going yeah, to work? work? How the fuck is that going to work? He it, teleports? Maybe he'll teleport. No, Jason is the one who can teleport. Michael's just really slow. And people No, always... I thought Michael appeared. I thought he up like he's slow, but then he like appears in front Imagine of you. Everybody trips and breaks their ankle <laughs> and he can catch up to them. Michael's the more grounded of the two. Yes, even when he was cursed by the by the Thorn cult. Okay. It's a whole thing. He erased that from the timeline. Jamie Lee Curtis is not his sister anymore. She beat him in the kitchen. Let me just say, all right, now what, what, is that, what does that mean? Halloween ends, right? It's supposed to be the big climactic ending of Jamie Lee Curtis versus Michael Myers. Do you remember the first Halloween movie, the very yes. first one? How Jamie Lee Curtis had to run between like three different houses to avoid and base and ultimately defeat Michael Myers. In the last movie, Halloween ends. She defeats him. The whole final battle takes place in a kitchen. That's it. Okay. We just did a kitchen. <laughs> Meanwhile, the first movie is like, oh, she's in this house. Now we got to run to this house. Now we're fighting them downstairs. Now we're going upstairs. Oh, it's a whole big thing. It's a, it's a fucking kitchen. Just beats him in the fucking kitchen. Halloween ends was bad. And if you like it, you should feel bad. <laughs> anyway. Um, hey. You want to try this calorie mate? You ever tried calorie no, mate? Well, there it, was, it is. I thought it was just an empty box. No, it's real. That's the last one I have. That's a calorie cho- mate. That's a chocolate flavored Ooh. calorie mate. You don't have to cook these, right? No, you literally. It's a it's a biscuit. Okay. You just you just eat it. All I right. just I just had a vanilla one. I should have saved the vanilla one for you, but there's a chocolate one. That's all right. I like chocolate. They're pretty good. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just a cracker kind of. Oh yeah. It it tastes kind of like an MRE. <laughs> It's I still, dry. I still haven't eaten those uh, cornbread MREs you gave me. I don't blame you. Will, she is old as fuck, but still hot. Oh, God. And can't run around like she used to. Says Flo. Look, man. The... I'm having the other half. Go ahead. It's not terrible. I've had worse. I kind of like the vanilla one that I had before. The 2018 Halloween movie it was actually pretty good. She got around pretty well in that. Also, she was loaded to the teeth. So, there was more she could have done than just restrain him to a table and slowly slit his wrist. Spoiler alert for Halloween ends. Is this not chocolate? This does not taste like chocolate. Give me that. It's buttery. It's buttery. Yeah. I have to Google Translate. Cheese. It's cheese flavored. I didn't have to Google Translate that. This don't taste like cheese. Uh, it's cheese. Does cheese taste like something else in Japan? <laughs> it does taste buttery. Yeah. Which is tangential to cheese. I guess. Oh, cream cheese. Cream cheese. That's what it is. They okay. like they they they're they're let me let me Google translate it. Okay. I can only read the cheese part. Okay. Um Anyway, there's an Xbox bundle. You want to fucking talk about that? <laughs> should, we start, should we read notifications? Oh, sure. I don't think we did that all show. No, we did at the beginning. All right, who do we read? Cheese flavor. <laughs> it's just cheese flavor. Just cheese. Okay. Yeah. It could mean cream cheese. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh. We did read some of these. Um, X Gamer, oh. thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, I'd love for Microsoft to bring back uh, for a PC Spider-Man Web of Shadows and Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions because I enjoyed those games and would love to play them again. Oh, those are Activision. 
They are, but I don't know how that would work between, you know, Disney owning them and, you know, Sony now owning the Spider-Man game license. So, it's a Marvel IP. Right. That Activision probably had a license for for a certain amount of years. Yeah, they own the rights to the Spider-Man games for a long time. So, that's over. Yeah. So, they would have to get those rights again. Yeah. And... Sony has those rights as of right now. Sony Sony has the rights to make current Spider-Man games. Mm-hmm. I think because Activision had the rights to make Web of Shadows and uh, Shattered Dimensions, they would have to go to Marvel and renegotiate to get those games uh, published now. Because I'm pretty sure that's what you know Capcom had to do with Marvel vs. Capcom. That's what... That's what Activision had to do with uh, when they did the HD versions of Ultimate Alliance. But yeah, and they're republishing it by putting it yeah. on like the Microsoft Store or something. Right. So yeah, that I would, mean they should. That would be a bit of a yeah. problem. Um, where 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 were we? Uh, Anthony Car uh, Corvini uh, for twenty four months. My MacBook has been broken for months, but now I can finally resub. Oh, thank you, thank you. Sorry about your MacBook. Yeah. A uh, big dad mayhem with the 12 months. A whole ass year. That blows my dick off. <laughs> Whoa. I hope you find it again. Yeah. X gamer with 100 bits for Crash. Back in the old days, Sony tried to make him their mascot if you were to remember from PS1 commercials. Yeah. They would we have know, a guy. Know. They had a guy in a Crash Bandicoot costume go to the Nintendo headquarters and yell at them through a megaphone. It was funny. <laughs> Um, he also says, Bob's friend, I forgot your name. You didn't watch Halloween Ends since that was the last movie. I did watch Halloween Ends. It was not good. It was very poorly edited. It had a lot of nonsensical moments. I get what they were trying to do. And it didn't work. Anyway. Um, where, where, where are we at now? Oh, let's look at the bundle. The bundle. Yes. It is an Xbox Series S and Game Pass Ultimate. Yes. Uh, announcing the Xbox Series S starter bundle launching worldwide on Halloween for three hundred US dollars. Spooky uh, includes an Xbox Series S five twelve gigabyte console, three months of Game Pass Ultimate, and a wireless controller. Uh, enjoy a next generation uh, console with hundreds of high quality games, including current oh. favorites, new releases, and time honor titles. This is just a Series S that comes with three months of Game Pass. Yes, that's all it is. Yes, um, that's kind of cool. That is cool. I think this is what they probably should have done when the Series S launched. Yeah, because that is that's why the Series S was made. You know, it, it's an entryway into the next gen system, and it's really an entryway to Game Pass. So. Why did it take them three years to finally do this? Uh, yeah, I uh, well because they could get away with not doing it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and now we're at the point where they got to start bundling stuff into the consoles to, to, to make some worthwhile. sales. Yeah. yeah. But so. at least they did it without a, a price increase, unlike some other console makers who tried to find sneaky ways to increase the price of their system. That is true. That, yeah, they're still crushing it with the cheapness of an yeah. Xbox Series S. Uh, we also have, uh, you know what? Let's just talk about analog. Okay. Let's get that out of the way because that's important. Everybody wants us to talk about that. We'll talk about analog. I mean, speaking of new consoles, to be fair, they didn't announce much, but we can piece together some information. Uh, the analog 3d, the future is here. 64 bits of pleasure. I don't like that. I don't like that either. Uh, wireless Bluetooth at 2.4 gigahertz, uh, four original style controller ports, completely engineered in FPGA, uses the analog OS, no emulation. Somebody's got to sue them. Why? Because they can't say that. <laughs> they can't say no emulation. I think they they can get around it by clarifying that it's there's no software emulation. Yeah, but they have to say that. They have to say that there is no software emulation. Well, there's there's a fine print. 
Where is that file? Analog oh. 3D does not support open FPGA. Okay. Analog 3D does not play copyrighted ROM files. It plays legacy game cartridges via the cartridge slot. Analog 3D is not designed using software emulation. It is designed using a specialty hardware chip called an FPGA, which operates on a transistor level, implementing a implementation of its functionality. Analog 3D does not infringe on any copyright or trademarks. Okay, you can't just say that. <laughs> That, I mean, it, that doesn't absolve you. I mean, but they can probably prove that. True. All trademarks are the property of their respective owners. Yeah. Uh, usually when they have like a fine print like that, they have little asterisks, yeah. but there's no asterisks. Uh, a reimagining of the Nintendo 64. It features 4K resolution, original display modes, reference quality recreations of specific models of CRT and PVM. The first and only aftermarket solution supporting 100% compatibility in every region, U.S., EU, and Jurassic Park, I mean Japan, <laughs> coming in 2024. And, and a little hint of the 8 controller that will come with it. And it looks cool. I like, yeah. I like the, I like, I know I'm going to like the controller. Yeah. It, it, it's modernized it's reminiscent of the yeah. like retro fighters and and the retro bit and like those yeah. style controllers or or the old holy controller that looks more like a modern controller yeah that's great you'll be able to also plug in a regular controller if you want yes yeah, the, so the weird use, trident like, looking thing you can also use like the retro fighter controllers or like other aftermarket controllers on. yes um so that's cool yes and and i'm sure that ape do will sell those separately yeah. when when they come out mm -hmm. Um, the first and only aftermarket solution. That's true. Uh, Hyperkin tried yeah. and then didn't end up releasing it because there's, here's my theory. That one is software emulation, the Hyperkin yeah. version of this. Uh, and software emulation for N64 is very difficult. Yes. Um, and here analog is trying to recreate it on a hardware level. Yeah. So it opens it up a little bit more. Um, I find it interesting that they say it supports every region, US, EU, and Japan. The N64, the original N64 is region free. Yeah. The region lock was a the way the cartridge slot was designed, but you can mod that to support any cartridge you want. Yeah, it's literally just uh, plastic prongs. Yeah. That's it. You just don't include the plastic prongs in your design and it's region free. Yeah. So, I mean... I mean, I know the it EU is a had, footnote. It's a footnote. The that EU they, had a uh, different frame rates, but I think that's you know that's workable. true. Yeah, uh, this is gonna be 4K, which is cool. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. You usually uh, is this their first 4K console? Yes. Yeah, that's a pretty big deal. I'm curious to see how that's gonna look. Oh, it's gonna look like shit. Yeah, and 64 <laughs> games don't look that great. Yeah. Um, and how that's gonna render and everything. I'm very yeah interested in that or if it's just going to be pixels that are blown up you know yeah. um and then they have their own crt like display modes Filters, and stuff yeah. and for the pocket they're pretty awesome yeah. so uh i'd imagine that this is going to look pretty good too um a couple of things that people are criticizing this for because everybody's got to criticize analog because yes. it's so popular mm -hmm. um this already exists in the meister that's fpga or the mister i'm sorry yeah that's fpga and you can just put a rom on there and play it just like you would on this right one. uh another thing is you can just emulate of course. the game and it would probably play fine and you know what that's true too and you could also just play on a regular n64 uh they have things like the super 64 by eon yes. that will make it so that you can just have hdmi out mm -hmm. and that's true yes all of those things are true yes this is still cool looking <laughs> yes i think people i think people are uh forgetting or like not realizing that obviously you don't need an analog uh 3d to play n64 games there are countless options to do that now i would honestly say if because this thing's going to be expensive yeah let's make that clear i don't see this thing launching for less than 300 dollars. right there are ways to play your current nintendo 64 on a modern tv with uh you know with hdmi and with wireless controllers even for much less than this yeah it's the difference between buying a an expensive turntable and an amplifier 
and proper speakers versus just going to Target and buying one of them suitcase uh, record players uh, from Crosley. You know, that's what it is. You either, you know, do something. You either go the cheap but efficient route or you get the super fancy high quality thing. So there, I agree, but also I'm not convinced that this is the like uh, hipster perfect experience. You, you know, like right. like some people would argue that the hipster perfect experience is an original N64 with an HDMI mod and then some other bullshit. You know, right? Um, but this is the apple version of an n64 basically Mm -hmm. that this is gonna be very nice looking very sleek Mm -hmm. it's gonna be very easy to use you just plug it right in everything's gonna work just right out of the box you don't have to fuck around with anything it's gonna work on a modern tv pretty much perfectly um and you'll get all of the different display modes and stuff very easily without having to like you know do some backflips yes uh which you would have to do on stuff even like the super 64 like that you just plug in the back and throw it on a tv but there Mm -hmm. is some weird stuff it's only 480p so you'd have to uh upscale it with a lot of tvs just just do a fine job of it but you're not going to get any display modes unless you fuck with it a lot um and same thing with an hdmi mod uh that's a little more involved so this is cool in some other ways uh I think the other issue is that analog lately has uh, had a really hard time keeping up with demand. Yes. It's been really uh, difficult to purchase any of their stuff. I think, well, because most recently their products were the re-releases of the pocket, the glow and dark one, and then the transparent color ones. They marketed those as limited edition. And then they only gave people like a week to prepare to buy it. And then it was like shut down. Like yeah. that was, it was sold out quickly. So I think in those cases, yes, people have a right to be a little salty in, uh, in regards to analog in their, uh, you know, how much they have in stock. Um, however, like you can still buy like a regular analog pocket, like they're shipping. Um, they have, they have also announced that the analog duo, their turbo graphics system is coming by the end of the year. Um, pocket adapters are also coming by the end of the year. What adapters? Uh, for the other portable systems, the Neo Geo, the, oh, okay. yeah, all those. Um, I'm surprised they're not out. Yeah, me too. That's <laughs> crazy. They're, they're coming. Um, you know, you also got to remember the pocket was supposed to come out a, a while ago, but you know, the, uh, semiconductor shortage really fucked up their timeline. So I think they're a small company. They don't have a lot of people working for them. So mm-hmm. they're slowly working their way back up to, to 100% and I think they're just about there you know I'm like like I said this is going to be expensive so I don't think a lot of people are going to like when they see the price they're not going to want to get it yeah you know th- this is going to be for the enthusiast of the enthusiast you know yeah absolutely um and uh, I don't know what else to say about the shit that that's gotten on 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 Twitter and such uh People seem to have turned on analog. I guess the other thing is that it's not... They keep claiming that it's not emulation because it's not software emulation. Right. Uh, But hardware is still emulation. And also, like, in the past, we've said that the emulation is pretty much perfect. Yeah. Uh, I think that even software emulation has gotten so close to perfect already. Uh, This takes it the rest of the way because Mm -hmm. it's hardware. But uh, even the Pocket has some weird stuff going on where it's like how much worth it is it to get yeah. the full hardware experience when software gets us the same Mo- amount of the way most people are not going to notice the difference between hardware and software emulation yeah like you only notice it if it's particularly bad mm. and i think a lot of people when they think of emulation they think of like they you know emulating stuff before the year 2000 so like ps1 um snes genesis nes game boy up to game boy advance i'll say so they're not looking at like emulating anything like really like heavy duty you know yeah so um people in the chat were also talking about i think uh we got samps in the chat who says i've done hdmi mod s video with retro tank still looks like ass curious to see how they pull this off and then someone else said um they still prefer 
uh, emulating. And I got to be honest, I I love analogs consoles. I think they're just beautifully designed and yeah. they're fun to mess around with. Um, and they and the output is always nice because it's just HDMI and it's already upscaled yeah. and everything's just great right out of the box. Um, but the easiest way for me to play these old games is just emulating it. Mm -hmm. uh, whether that be on Nintendo Switch Online or just on my computer. Mm -hmm. So when I want to play N64 games like Mario 64, I'm going to just fucking load up uh, Project 64 or something and play it that way because mm -hmm. that's going to be the easiest way for me to do it. Uh, the same is going to be true after this comes out. I feel like I'm just going to probably end up at I'm, I'm going to get this. And I'm going to use it and I'm going to like it. And then it's going to go right on a shelf and I'm going to continue to emulate it because yeah. uh, emulation gets you 99% of the way there. Yeah. Anyway, T Bird, thanks for the 11 months. Uh, also, Flo says, Good thing Bob didn't agree to my bet on Twitter. I lost and would have owed Scoot five gifted subs. I, I saw your bet and I would have taken it. I didn't understand what fucking bet you were <laughs> on about. Uh, one of you was betting it was going to be an analog pocket advance, which I thought was ridiculous. And yeah. I would have loved to have bet against it, but I didn't understand what the, what the bet was. Why would I, why would Jackson get subs if I was right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, Ivy source says, will, do you emulate games? Yeah, not a lot, but, I, I've I dabble in the emulation space. I'm currently play, you know I'm mostly focused on playing modern stuff, but if I want to play retro stuff, I I can emulate. Would you argue that you play original hardware more than you emulate? Well, let's talk about retro. Let's talk about let's retro. Talk stuff. about retro. Yeah. Lately, it's been emulation. Okay. I've been playing on Analog Pocket. I've been playing Switch Online. Um, that's emulation. It's just, it's legal emulation All right. to an extent. Would you argue you do more legal, uh, would you argue you play your retro games legally more than you do illegally? I would argue I play my retro games more illegally. Through unofficial means. That's what I'll, that's how I'll say it. I mean, this might be a cop-out answer, but I want to play games in the most convenient manner possible same so if i see like super metroid is available on switch okay i'll play it on switch i have it as part of my subscription that's fine zero mission is not available on switch on in on any service in any capacity it's on my analog pocket i'll play it on my analog pocket then that's that's how i go about it right i don't mind Shelling out a few bucks to have it on a, a system I already own. But if I have to emulate it, then I will emulate it. I agree. Mm -hmm. But I think that leads me to doing it using unofficial means more often. Right. Um, well, yeah. It's like the more, again, the more barriers you put in front of me, the less likely I'm going to be to do it the proper way. Yeah. Like Nintendo Switch Online has gotten me to use official means way more because right. a, a lot of those games, I'm uh, a lot of the, there's not, uh, uh, in the grand scheme of things, the library on Nintendo Switch Online isn't that big. Right. But it's got all the important stuff. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of the important stuff that I would spend many, many hours playing. So it's good that it exists. Yeah. Okay. So uh, 2024 is when we will see the analog uh, N64. Yeah. Uh, it does not have an open FPGA chip. No. Just like uh, none of their other consoles. None of their do. other systems do, which I'm surprised by because they, they made a big thing about that with the Pocket. I think it's because the Pocket plays a lot of different systems. Right. And it was billed as playing many, many systems. Yeah. Uh, this is just for the Nintendo 64 um so that it, it's just an n64 that kind of makes sense right. um all of their other consoles were hacked pretty immediately yes. where you can sideload games from a from a micro sd card mm -hmm. uh you can get an everdrive for this thing but i expect this to be cracked open pretty quickly uh so there's that i mean i have basically every n64 game i'd want to play yeah um, but 
it'd be cool to see what sort of uh homebrews can play on this thing yeah uh maybe it's got a little more power than a regular n64 maybe you could put some stuff oh, on I'd the micro sd card yeah that would be really cool to to be able to to do because right now there's a lot of homebrewed stuff that I have that will not play on an actual cartridge. You need yeah. a very beefy actual cartridge in order to get it to actually play. Also, like, I'm sorry, going back to just playing on a Mister. I'm trying to figure out how to buy a Mister. I, I, I'm with you. How Everybody do, wants me to fucking talk that? about Mister, and it is not the simple solution. Oh, I like. I do know. Also, it is expensive. I I have seen completed misters on like third party sites for like six hundred dollars. Here's one on AliExpress for five hundred dollars. Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah, it is just a chip. Yeah, and then you, and then you build it. <laughs> yeah, that see that's what we're talking about. Barriers in the way preventing you. Yeah. from wanting to do something. Yeah, it hasn't really appealed to me. Yeah. Honestly. How many fucking Ambernicks do you have? <laughs> I was about to buy one today. I was oh, about no. to buy another Ambernick. So there's a thing that I found today. I, I think it was on some emulation subreddit. Um, there was a thing that came out in 2012, at least. Mm -hmm. it might be older than that. It's a Game Boy Advance clone console. It looks like a Game Boy Micro, uh -huh. but it has a cartridge slot, and you can play Game Boy Advance games on it. So it's basically an analog pocket from 2012. Right. Um, and Ambernick bought it, and they sell it now, okay. and they've been selling it. Do you remember what it's called? Uh, nope. <laughs> it uh, sucks, apparently. Okay. Apparently it's bad, but I wanted to get it. But it was $70. I thought that was a lot. Yeah. Might as well just buy a Game Boy Advance. How much is a Game Boy Mi Micro? Those are a lot of money. I know that. They are a lot of money. No, I'm just looking at Game Boy yeah. Micros. Um, okay. Anbernick Game... Oh, that was it. Uh, Revo K101. K1... I'm on Anbernick's website. Oh, you gotta just Google K101. But yeah, 70 bucks is kind of a lot for something that yeah. I know is going to be bad. Also, the picture I oh, saw yeah. was a nice white one, and now the only ones I'm seeing are these like the shitty Famicom. Famicom. Yeah. Like, I love the Famicom look. Mm -hmm. This one looks bad. Yeah. I don't love that. So I wish it, if it looked different, I might actually buy it. Support for official GBA cartridges. Support for pirated GBA cartridges. Oh, my God. Support for a K card. Supports Game Boy Color, Game Boy, NES, uh, Master System, Game Gear, and PC Engine game emulators. Official and unofficial GBA link cable support. Charge via mini USB, powered USB, or optional wall adapter. Here's a uh, smoky black one. Ooh. I would get that. That one's only 60 bucks, but it's from a weird website yeah. I've never seen before. Ships from the U.S. or China? <laughs> yeah, that's all Ambernick stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think the implication is that it's cheaper from China, but takes longer. Right. But it seems like they're both the same price when I okay. looked. Um. So yeah, I I I, I kinda, I'm kind of a little interested in this, but uh, I I don't want the Famicom one. Right. Anyway, uh, we got to plow through some... We're, 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 pretty, we're pretty late in the game right now. Yeah, shit. Uh, uh, all right. PlayStation 5 Cloud Streaming launches this month for PlayStation Plus Premium members. Wait. This month, October. What is, what is this? Let me read. Okay. Uh, since launching the all-new PlayStation Plus more than a year ago, we've seen a high engagement from our fans on our offerings... From the quality titles offered in the game catalog like Horizon Forbidden West and Sea of Stars to new trophy features we've added to classic games like Legion of Dragoon and Siphon Filter today. We have more details to share about PlayStation 5 cloud streaming for PlayStation Plus premium members. Starting this month, uh, we will begin launching cloud streaming access for supported PlayStation 5 digital titles within the PlayStation Plus games catalog and game trials as well as supported titles in the PS5 game library that PlayStation Plus Premium members own. Select PS5 games will be available for streaming, and we're planning to have hundreds of games 
uh, to support this new benefit. This includes top PS5 hits from the PlayStation Plus game catalog, such as Spider-Man Miles Morales, Horizon Forbidden West, Ghost of Tsushima, Mortal Kombat 11, and Saints Row 4. Game trials for PS5 games such as Hogwarts Legacy, The Witcher 3, and The Callisto Protocol. Additional PS5 digital titles uh, PlayStation Plus Premium members own uh, will be available for streaming such as Resident Evil 4, Dead Island 2, Genshin Impact, Fall Guys, and Fortnite. These are just a few examples of, of supported PS5 games that will be included in, uh, in the cloud streaming option uh, in addition to download. PS5 cloud streaming is exclusively available on the PS5 console at launch. God fucking damn it. Without having to download a game, players can access PS5 game streaming with their PlayStation Plus Premium membership. Additionally, uh, PlayStation Plus Premium members will also see features available with the new PS5 streaming benefit, including downloadable content and in-game purchases will be available for game streaming, including DLC and add-ons, uh, similar to the purchases from downloadable games. High quality resolution options, including 4K, 1440p, 1080p, 720p, uh, with 60 frames per second, and SDR or HDR output. Enhanced audio uh, for all PS5 audio capabilities, um, capture screenshots and record up to three minutes of video, which will be downloaded to your media gallery on PS5. Um, since this will be a large undertaking for our teams to roll out, we plan to launch regionally through a phased approach. Here are the launch dates we are currently targeting in all uh, in all times. This is launching in Japan October 17th uh, today. Um, Europe, they are targeting October 23rd. And here in America, they are targeting October 30th. Okay. Um so this just makes their whole PlayStation Plus thing more fucking confusing. Yeah, I was going to say uh they got rid of PlayStation Now because uh nobody liked it right. and uh they wanted to uh simplify their messaging. Yeah. And this uh makes it way more complicated. It does. They probably should have just announced this as more benefits for PlayStation 5 or PlayStation Plus premium subscribers. Because cloud streaming already exists. It's just in... It's for PlayStation 3 games. And uh, on PC. And PlayStation 4 games. Some select PlayStation 4 games right. on PC. But this is for PlayStation 5. This is for on the PlayStation 5 for PlayStation 5 games. Yes. yes. But you can't stream PlayStation 5 games to the PC from the cloud. Yes. Yeah. Which is why this is all incredibly confusing. Yes. The whole point of cloud streaming is you can play the game wherever you want, wherever yes. is most convenient to you. No, they don't understand that. They, uh, they, clearly. They, they are just, they're, they're rolling out their cloud streaming one small, like, uh, use case at a, at a time. Yeah. And this one is playstation 5 on the playstation 5 console yeah which defeats the purpose of cloud streaming 100 to, to me because yeah. like when i want to cloud stream something it's almost always uh i'm away from my console mm -hmm. uh very rarely have i uh used cloud streaming uh because i don't want to download the game like yeah. I've, I've done that on pc before Right. I've been like, let me just jump into this game because I don't know if I wanted to take up the hard drive space yet. Yeah. So that's, I guess, is 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 a reasonable use case. But for the most part, I'm just sitting here waiting for PlayStation Plus Premium to allow me to cloud stream my games on my computer or on my uh, Ally or my Steam Deck or, or your something. PlayStation Portal. Oh wait, that you know what? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, Th this whole brand new feature that they're announcing, you can't use with their upcoming portable device. That is extremely dumb. The PlayStation Portal should not come out until cloud streaming is ready to be flung right to my PlayStation Portal. Yeah. I don't know if they think that the PlayStation Portal will take sales away from a PlayStation 5 device, but no. who cares? 
Like they're not going to make any money. Like 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 they should want to make money off of the PlayStation Plus premium subscription sales. Yeah. Instead of the PlayStation Five consoles because they're not making any money off the consoles. Yeah. So, uh, their cloud streaming situation is dumb and continues to be dumb. Yeah. No, it's not a good look. It's not a good situation. Um, and there's look, there has a lot of technology being a lot of technological words being thrown around here. 4k. Yeah. HDR. Some audio bullshit. There's no chance maxing all of that out is going to work. No, you're going to have problems. Yeah. I'm interested to see how well it works, but uh, yeah. I, I don't have a lot of faith. Uh, all right, let's do all of this quickly. Did I say thank you, T-Bird, for the 11 months? Well, thank you, T-Bird, for the 11 months. Uh, let's talk about Mario Wonder, because that comes out this week. Uh, and a back-to-back -back developer blog published today, Nintendo answered a wide variety of questions about the upcoming 2D platformer, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, uh, including the repeated including repeatedly confirming that it was not influenced by the movie. Despite receiving a significant graphical overhaul compared to New Super Mario Bros., developers working on New Super, uh, Super Mario Bros. Wonder revealed today that it didn't uh, have much insight with, into the going-ons of the motion picture since they were being developed concurrently. When asked if the facial expressions and character animations were influenced by the Universal Pictures film, uh, developer Matsunobu Sat uh, Sato said... We're often asked about the film's influence on the game, but we didn't hear anything about the film's content during development. I think Tezuka-san and Kondo-san um, were the only members who knew any details. Fellow de developer Takeshi Tezuka elaborated, saying, During development, we didn't know when the movie would be released, but we were sure some people would play the game because they watched the movie. This is why we are conscious of creating a game that didn't disappoint them. So this for this game, we decided we dedicated ample budget and time to create the characters with even more care and attention in greater detail. They also cited the Switch's more powerful technology compared to the hardware that was used in the last two Super Mario Brothers games um, and the evolution of their 3D models and how amusingly sh uh, lots of details they built uh, won't be seen since the game is entirely in 2D. So... Uh... This also reminds me of how Princess Peach Showtime. Yes. Uh, they changed the box art and made her face, people argued, a little more like in the movie. See, I don't think they did. I They definitely curbied her face where they made her look angry in the, the American box art. Not really. Um, they the, just... one, the one where she's kicking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they made they made her angry yeah. there for sure. But the the regular face, they just changed the shape of her eyes. Yeah. I don't know how much that makes it like the like the I don't movie. I don't think it's that much. Cuz she looks very similar to classic peach model in the movie. People were taking a lot of the animations from Super Mario Wonder and saying that this was directly related to the movie somehow. No, and I, I just think, think that is. they just wanted they just wanted to change Mario. They yeah. just wanted to 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 I will say put some work into a 2D Mario. The fact that we're once. getting a lot more Mario games, like the fact that we're getting Mario RPG and the Thousand Year Door and like all that, that's in response to the movie. Mm -hmm. Because Nintendo sees, oh, people like this Mario game we have. Do we have any other Mario games we can put out? Uh yeah, we have all these old Mario games that people want to play. I guess we'll put them on Switch. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, there a lot of Mario stuff is available right now for the yeah. Switch that uh if you are just now learning about Mario because you saw the movie, there's plenty for you to Yeah, like experience. most of the Mario library is on Switch. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think that they decided they wanted to have a slight artistic change in the mm -hmm. way uh, Mario looks and, and is animated, and yeah. they put a little extra work into this new 2D Mario, yeah. and this is the result of it. Yeah. Uh, we also got a new voice actor. Yes, of uh, Kevin Af Afghani. A is it not Afghani? Afghani. I don't know how to read. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Afghani is the actor behind Mario and Luigi in Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Nintendo confirmed on Friday Afghani replaces Charles Martinet, who provided uh, Mario's chipper Wahoos and It's a Me's for more than 25 years. Afghani announced his involvement uh, on Twitter. Uh, saying incredibly proud to have voiced Mario and Luigi in new Super Ma and sorry in Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Thanks to Nintendo for inviting me into the Flower Kingdom. Uh, Nintendo confirmed the role uh, in an email to Polygon. He, I think, 
was born the year after Mario 64 came out. Yes. <laughs> yes. He, he is, is a young he's man. A young man. So I hate him. <laughs> It's from what I've heard so far. It sounds good. Yeah, I, it I sounds really, like Mario. I haven't really know. I mean, I I only I played about ten minutes in Target, right? And it sounded fine. Everything sounded good. Yeah. Uh, the That's only good. thing that didn't sound good, the jump sound weirded me out. It's yeah. very high pitched and okay. weird. Is it yeah. completely different from all the other? Yes. Okay. It's noticeably different, and it's so different that it made the whole game feel weird. That'll do that. You know, because, like, that's the same thing with Sonic the Hedgehog. In 2D, he has a very particular j- jump sound, except in Sonic CD. Uh. It's, no, it's higher pitched. Mm-hmm. So, like, when I hear that, like, I think of Sonic CD rather than the other games I'm more used to. Yeah. So, I think I'm playing Sonic CD. Yeah. I mean, I liked what I played. I talked all about it on the Nintendo podcast. Yeah. I'm not going to rehash it. But I liked a lot of what I played, and I will play it a lot more this Thursday. It comes out on Friday. I'm trying to get my hands on it a, a day earlier. Um, but I'm excited for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? Hideki Kamiya uh, has changed careers. Uh, Platinum Games former vice president Hideki Kamiya has launched a YouTube channel and says he feels very refreshed after quitting the company he co-founded. Uh, in a video published on Thursday, Kamiya reiterated that he's not planning to retire from game development, but claims uh, that he won't be able to take a job in the industry for at least a year, likely due to a non-compete clause. I'm Hideki Kamiya, and I'm unemployed. Welcome to my channel. I'm out of a job, so please subscribe, he joked. It, I feel very refreshed. Did he say this from his Lamborghini? The, yes. <laughs> Uh, I feel very refreshed ha- after leaving Platinum. I've been watching Netflix, Disney Plus, YouTube, and stuff like that. I've already lost track of what day it is. I haven't been, uh, I haven't been to work for a while. I think it's been about three months since I decided to quit. Once I decided to leave, I had to clean up all these toys and stuff that uh, like that. Once I finished cleaning, I was at home with my paid vacation. The reason behind Kamiya's decision to leave has not been made public, and the game designer uh, gives little explanation in this video beyond hinting. Uh, that his views possibly didn't align with its future direction. How should I put it? Um, there's no way I can put it, he says. You guys understand, right? But I'd say I left the company because I wanted to follow my beliefs as a game creator and to choose the path I think is right and move on. Yeah, so I'm not going to retire yet. I want to keep creating games. Uh, this is incredibly strange. This yeah. is definitely a reaction to uh, Sakurai having a YouTube channel because even the thumbnail looks like a like yeah. like the same sort of design that uh, I mean it's all uh, this is just what Japanese YouTube looks like, but uh, it's reminding me of Sakurai's YouTube mm-hmm. channel. Um, later on in this article, it says that Kamiya said, "To be super clear, I'm not retiring as long as there's a place that would hire me. So you know, I'm gonna wait for the offer. I will consider any offer above a hundred million yen, which is six hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year. So if there's any company that would offer me that, please contact me here. I hate that. I hate <laughs> all of that. That, Why? that it's just like." Hey, look at me in my fucking f- Lamborghini. Uh, he, he's follow me here. Also, I'm looking for six hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year. That's just such a weird. He's thing definitely to hot do. dogging it. Yeah, yeah. He like I think he's like has like that person uh, persona of like you know the hotshot game designer. You know, it was like if you want me, you got to pay for me. I'm not cheap. Yeah, you know. But I think his work speaks for itself. He puts out like great games that people love. I, I, no. <laughs> I think that his games are way overhyped. I, I don't think his games are as, I don't think his games warrant him being like this. <laughs> I think people love them. Yeah. But I don't think they should. <laughs> They're not that good. I mean,. And when he worked at Capcom, he put out like some of the, their best games: Resident what? Evil Two, Devil May Cry. Oh, never mind. Take it all back. Take it all <laughs> Okami, back. Okami, Beautiful Joe. Like he has. A I don't think platinum games are that are as good as people say. I, I think that they don't warrant all of this uh, uh, cult following. I think the the platinum sheen, as it were, has like dulled over time because mm-hmm. I think they took a lot. They took a lot of work for higher games um, that like just didn't pan out very well um astral chain was bad 
I, I don't know why everybody acted like that game was amazing. I did not play it, so I cannot. That game came out, and everyone was like, this game is the one of the best games on the Switch. And then everybody forgot about it the week after it came out. I, I mean, it looked good. It, it, it wasn't. Okay. I promise it wasn't good. <laughs> <laughs> And a lot of their games follow the same sort of thing. Yeah. Like, like they're they're at, there's all this hype around it, and then you play it, and it's like, all right, where was where's the where's the good part of the game? You know what was good? Transformers Devastation. It was, was that a platinum game? That was a platinum game. It was they did three licensed games for Activision because they needed money. They did uh, a Legend of Korra game that sucked. They did Transformers Devastation, which was actually really good. I heard this game was they, good. It was pretty fucking good. I remember this. And then they did a Ninja Turtles game, uh, Mutants in Manhattan, that was mid. <laughs> okay. So, I do remember this game. Yeah. Yeah. That game was a lot of fun. Anyway. Uh, I don't know. Just something about a retiring uh, 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 video game exec explaining his retirement from his ferrari makes does it doesn't make me want to watch <laughs> i think i think they're reporting it as a retirement he quit yeah and he like want like he did he's like quitting in spectacular fashion i think something happened he said yeah. that like he doesn't like his vision like isn't aligning with what platinum wants to do anymore so I think that pissed him off so much because this is this is a very temperamental guy. He will block <laughs> you on Twitter like just for saying hi to him, just in English. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, he probably's like, "All right, you know what? I'm out. Fuck you guys." Yeah, no, he definitely is. But because, like, also too, like, he's like the biggest name at Platinum right now. Like, people are gonna want to hire him or give him money to form his own studio. So, like, he like he's gonna showboat yeah at this point so I no mean, i i, I don't, and I don't, that's kind of his his vibe yeah um and yeah I, I don't i think it's pretty obvious that something happened and that also like there have been disagreements between him and the rest of platinum in the yeah. in the past even with some of the games that they've that he's worked on yeah. recently um anyway what else do we got? Uh, mecha dragon with 18 months how was comic-con for you bros i forgot we did comic we did comic-con on on separate days. Yes, uh, it was good. Yeah, not I, I was only there for like two or three hours, but it was it was it was good. I was there all day and I was exhausted. I'm too old for this shit. I got a cool piece of art from Gavin Gidry. Gidry. Yes, I bought his indie comic. Uh, I don't know if I can say what I bought, <laughs> but it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. It's very nice, and I'm excited for uh, the work he is doing in the future. Yeah, he's doing a lot of cool shit. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, Disney boss reportedly being urged to acquire a major game publisher. Uh, in a report published by Bloomberg, uh, it seems that not all is happy at the House of Mouse with reports of discontent following comments made before the sag after strike and a handful of other flops at the box office. Uh, and one way that executives have suggested Disney can get back on track is by looking at video games. Apparently, publishers EA and Ubisoft have been mentioned and both have very recent history of handling a number of Disney IPs. But Bob Iger, who is currently in his second term as CEO after returning to the position in November 2022, has reportedly been non-committal. Uh, there are plenty of video games out there that use the Disney license. Uh, Disney Illusion Island, Dreamlight Valley, uh, Speedstorm, uh, Jedi Survivor are recent examples, but also the upcoming Iron Man, Black Panther, and Star Wars Outlaws. Um, while Jedi Survivor, Iron Man, and Black Panther are being handled by EA, Outlaws is uh, being handled by Ubisoft. Of course, these are all just reports for now with uh, nothing confirmed from Disney itself. We'll have to wait and see what happens over the course of the next few months at the House of Mouth. Uh, Iger's first stint as head of entertainment, um, as head of the entertainment company, ran from 2005 to 2020 and saw the company acquire a huge number of studios, including Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilm, and 20th Century Fox. Um, on his return to the position in 2020, following a shaky tenure from his former from former head uh, Bob Chapek. So. The board of directors is saying, like, hey, maybe we should get back into video games because, like, that's a good revenue stream and we're not, like, making the sort of money we used to. Bob Iger was actually the guy who closed down all of Disney's old <laughs> video game studios because, in fairness to him, he had a point. Disney had never really been able to create a name for themselves in the game space. Like, they've never been able to make Disney a video game company. 
but they've had better success with licensing their their IP out to other studios to make hit games with. Yes. So I sometimes think that's f- those studios would would return something that's not great. Yes. Um. But yeah, I think it's obvious to a lot of people and a lot of executives these days that video game, if if you care and put work into it and 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 kind of uh, uh oversee it, yeah, you can make something great. Yeah. Like not to give Warner Brothers all the credit in the world, but like they've actually taken the time and like put effort into the video games they make. Warner Brothers like actually has a credible video games division mortal mm-hmm. Kombat, the arkham games uh they published uh cd project reds games so they they have a better handle on what they're doing they like made it in the game space yeah i think disney could but you know i don't think at least their current ceo wants to i want them to uh do better things with the star wars uh games which yeah. they have yeah. they have so uh, the respawn games are good I think Outlaws does look very good. I'm excited for yeah. that. I, I think that they're doing a lot of good uh, yeah. good changes. They started off a lot of flops. Oh, they, yeah. They started... They, they, I mean, Lucas Arts uh, crumbled. Yes. Uh, didn't do anything for a while. And then Disney picked everything up and just gave it to EA to burn. Yeah. Uh, but now they're fixing it. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Now they can apply that to other IPs that they own. Yeah. All right. Uh, Best Buy is uh, 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 end of the world. Uh, The consumer electronics (laughs) retailer will phase out sales of DVDs and Blu-ray discs both in-store and online in early 2024. According to industry sources familiar with the company's plans, Best Buy made the initial decision to end DVD sales nine months ago, according to one source. Best Buy confirmed on Friday uh, that it is ending the sales of DVDs. To state the obvious, the way we watch movies and TV shows is much different today than it was a decade ago, Best Buy spokesperson said to Variety. Making this change gives us more space and opportunity to bring consumers uh, new and innovative tech for them to explore, discover, and enjoy. Best Buy will continue to sell movies and TV shows on physical discs through the 2023 holiday shopping season, online, and in stores before discontinuing sales in the next year. The company will continue to sell video games. As of mid-2023, Best Buy had um, uh, 1,129 store locations with 969 of those in the U.S. So, uh, it, it this seems obvious. Like, like I feel like this was inevitable. P- people aren't buying movies as much as they used to. No. I, people are buying physical media. Like, they're still, you know, movie studios are still putting out DVDs and Blu-rays. You have companies like the Criterion Collection, like Shout Factory, um, uh, and also Redbox is still fairly popular. Um, they're still supporting physical disc, but those have become niche markets. Those are yeah. like vinyl records. Like not everybody listens to vinyl records, but the people who do like will spend the money and get the best. Uh, I would expect them to just drastically uh, reduce the amount that they're selling. Like, well, they're not I- even selling them online anymore. Yeah. That surprises me. I-, I would have expected them to just have like new releases and that's it. Yeah. Uh, but no, they're getting rid of them all completely. Yeah, that's, but I, what I will say is shocking, though, is they're still going to sell video games in store. Now, that yeah. that I, says something. I don't think that's shocking at all. I think that... Uh, well, we hear all this doom and gloom about like the video game industry going more and more digital. And here we have a major electronics retailer, a store that I have a lot of fond memories of going to and buying DVDs from you know, in my youth. Um, saying they're not going to sell DVDs anymore, you would think video games would be the next step in that. What this says to me is that video game, like we always hear like more and more people buying games digitally, but if Best Buy is still going to sell games physically, that means that they're seeing enough of a profit from video game sales to want to warrant the continuing sale of them in store. So people are still buying games physically you know, enough to, for Best Buy to want to keep selling them. I can't, I mean, I'm not a movie guy, but I can't remember the last time I bought a movie. I definitely, I try to buy games digitally these mm-hmm. days, but I still buy a lot of physical games. And and if I wanted to, I would probably go to Best Buy, right. you know? So um, I think it makes a lot of sense. Also, because uh, 
downloading a game is a little different than downloading a movie like a movie you yeah. can stream it and it's very easy you hit a button and it's all there yeah. but downloading a game uh that's a big thing when yeah. you can just go to the store yoink it and you have it you know mm -hmm. i think we are at least one generation away from games being mostly digital yeah uh right now i think on the nintendo switch only 30 percent of people are buying digital games like at all really yeah like like uh i saw a statistic last week and it seemed like uh it's still mostly physical stuff which kind of surprised me well i guess like switch you give it like that's more of a you know you give switches switches to kids yeah like give, parents are buying yeah. it for their kids so they're gonna buy the physical yeah also stuff. like you know you buy them the cart then you know the, you, your two little brats can share the game also there's not a lot of storage on the switch that too so you'd have to an adult would have to figure out what to do <laughs> with with your stupid little switch um but yeah i think next generation we're already seeing it looks like uh microsoft well yeah they want to do a, a series x all digital yeah sony's still selling their all digital playstation 5 yeah so i think that uh next generation we're gonna see uh mostly digital future i don't know if it's gonna be all digital but it, there's potential for that yeah i wouldn't be surprised if it was honestly yeah uh okay uh, nintendo speaking of sales mm -hmm. made made a big they had a big was it this year yeah this, this year. year big sales this year yeah they sold exactly one <laughs> wii u uh nintendo discontinued the wii u in 2017 and is shutting down online connectivity by the end of this year um, but according to Circana industry analyst Matt Piscatella, Nintendo sold a single new Wii U in the United States in the year of our Lord, 2023. This has to be a mistake. It's by reportedly the, way. the first new Wii U sold since May 2022. <laughs> My uh, God. Piscatella said on Twitter that Circana tracks sales data for consoles across most retailers, which makes up 97% of US hardware retail sales. The Wii U purchased from a retailer this year wasn't a refurbished or used console, uh, which there's certainly a more active market for. It was a brand new Wii U sold in the year 2023. So, okay, so the article even goes on to say, how did this happen? It's pretty unusual for a retailer to have a stock uh, this old at any point, manufacturers would eventually ask for the console back. This rare new Wii U must have gotten uh, stuffed away for a while before miraculous sale last month. Piscatella told Polygon that information for where the Wii U was sold isn't available. He added that one-off sales like this for other consoles and games happens fairly regularly, likely when the dust is brushed off uh, something buried in the back of the store. Uh, there's not much uh, to the data other than that. Just a fun peculiar, peculiar, peculiarities. Nailed it. That's what I, that's what I'm thinking. Like this was a weird mistake. Like like yeah. maybe it got pennied out and uh, it got tracked as a sale. Well, so when Toys R Us was closing down mm -hmm. and like they had to sell off all their stock, somebody found Sonic the Hedgehog two for Game Gear buried under a shelf. And they brought it to the cash register and it scanned and it came up with a price and they sold it to that person at that price. So it's very possible that whatever store this person bought it from had a, had a Wii U just buried somewhere. Yeah. And they wanted it and it was still in the system and they sold it to them. So like some random ass target, like had it in the back. So I'm looking mm -hmm. on eBay because that's a sealed inbox Wii U. Yeah. We can only assume. Uh, hey man, eight hundred dollars or best offer. Uh, we got the Mario one that is a thousand dollars. The Mario Maker one Ooh, is a thousand dollars complete in, uh, or sealed in box. Um, that's open box. That's open box. Brand new, two hundred and sixty five dollars for the eight gigabyte one. Um. So you're looking at a decent amount of money for for one of yeah. these, and I'd imagine that a store at like a Best Buy trying to sell one is probably gonna sell it for pretty cheap. There's another Mario Maker one for four hundred dollars. So, uh, probably guy probably got a great deal. Yeah. Anyway, oh, we got X Gamer 100 bits. Come to Canada, where Toys R Us 
still is open and exists also last of my bits okay bye bye yeah toys r us is still in canada and like every time i like i see on instagram like the toy accounts i follow like post and finds and toys r us i'm like oh motherfucker <laughs> allegedly they're opening up toys r us stores again particularly on cruise lines i'm not going on fucking cruise to shop at a toys r us that's dumb yeah. why do they do that i don't know apparently there are stores on cruise ships which i guess makes sense yeah i guess but like i don't want to go on a cruise uh minecraft still the best-selling video game of all time by like a wide margin what's the margin 300 what's... million copies sold and what's the second uh best selling for comparison grand theft auto 5 has sold 185 million units uh mario kart 8 the best-selling nintendo game ever oh my god sorry one of the best uh selling nintendo games ever is 63 million units across two systems so 300 million units for minecraft my god that's yeah. because people buy it multiple times uh, multiple but i guess yeah i guess they did that with grand theft auto but there's more ways to buy minecraft yeah across multiple systems um also uh netflix has game streaming on tv netflix is expanding its game streaming beta testing to the u.s um the feature which lets you play game streams uh from the cloud on devices like your tv or computer first launched uh in august in canada and the uk in the blog post, Netflix notes it's a limited beta test, so it seems like this won't be available to too many people to start. Um, like with the original test, the only two games available are Oxenfree and um, Mulhue's Mining Adventure. Uh, if you have access to the service, you'll need to download Netflix's special controller app for your phone um, to play the game on your TV. Netflix says the streamed games work on selected devices, including Fire TV, uh, Chromecast uh, with Google TV, uh, Roku, and a few more. On the web, you'll need to play the games with a mouse and keyboard. Netflix has been steadily growing its games library and offering and offerings as a way uh, to offer more benefits to subscribers. The vast majority of its games are available on mobile devices, but the company has been vocal about its interest in expanding beyond iOS and Android. According to a Monday report from the Wall Street Journal, the company is planning to release games based on its own hit franchises like Squid Game, Wednesday, Extraction, and Black Mirror. And it has discussed with Take-Two about licensing a game from the Grand Theft Auto series. Oh. Yeah. A game? Like like a new one or an old game? I, I've heard both. I've okay. heard like uh, the, the trilogy and I've heard Grand Theft Auto 6. <laughs> okay, that would be weird. Yeah. Um. So you have to. You still have to play it with an app. Though. You still have to play like with, a touch yeah. screen thing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you could do that with RPGs. But again, like it's it's beta testing. So, yeah. if you know, like Apple TV supports uh, support for PlayStation controllers and Xbox controllers, so if they can get it on an Apple TV and they can get it working with a regular game controller, we're gonna see Netflix be like an actual. We we might be seeing Netflix become an actual competitor to Game Pass within a year, yeah. at the rate they're going. I think that that's possible yeah. because I mean they need to keep making more and more money and the, yeah. that one way to do that is to enter a completely different market. Yes. Yeah. Uh okay, last thing. We we have the, the a new contender for the worst game of yes. the year. Yes. Previously was that Gollum game, but now uh Skull Island Rise of Kong is out today. Uh it is $40 and it's already being called the worst game of the year. And it was developed by Iguana Bee, a Chilean studio behind uh, G.I. Joe Operation Blackout and Head Snatchers. And it's published by Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl's Game Mill Entertainment uh, under license. Just a, just, a, just a glowing list of, yeah. <laughs> of, of previous games. Uh, announced, uh, announcing its release date, Game Mill uh, described Skull Island Rise of Kong as an exhilarating third-person action-adventure game that lets you become Kong on a journey of vengeance as you fight to claim your rightful place as the king of skull island the truth of skull island however is quite different it has already gone viral on social media for all the wrong reasons with one teat with one teat with one tweet <laughs> showing a cut scene with visuals you'd expect three generations ago viewed nearly seven million times uh i don't know if you're playing it on screen but one of the screenshots was uh literally it's a cut scene and in the middle of the cut scene it's just a, a low res this one yeah. It's a low res still frame of the dinosaur. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah, I mean, we we did talk about this uh, on an episode about how, um, I mean, this game already looked weird, but like people are weirdly into big monsters fighting each other. Yeah, 
uh those guys are disappointed oh yeah this week oh yeah this is uh not not good <laughs> not, not not good not good for them oh man kind of want to play it kind of want to see the shit wait, show wait another week for it to be ten dollars yeah <laughs> Uh, hey, it's time for this now. Tweet of the week, tweet of the week, tweet of the week. Check this out. So this, I don't know if I should play it, honestly. Okay. Uh, because... Media has been disabled in response to a report uh, by the copyright owner. Oh, actually, I can't play it. I thought I had it open. Oh, no. Well, it's over. <laughs> it, well, it, that, that's, it, it, this is interesting. It got taken down during this episode because wow. i pulled it up during the episode yeah. maybe like 20 minutes ago and uh it got taken down already this was by contendo yt mm -hmm. and it was the flower in super mario wonder just going fuck you <laughs> over and over again i've heard i i saw i saw a news article about that i didn't watch it but now that i know who posted it wow i thought i had the tab open yeah that's annoying. Anyway, uh, we're going to talk to you guys. Yes. Right Sorry about people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. We got Tommy Fitz from last week who said, so glad you guys decided to keep the Tweet of the Week jingle going for me. No problem. No problem. Uh, yeah. Timmy. I call him Tommy. It's Timmy. Rick Boy 50,000 says, I would like to know if you buy a Japan disk drive and put it in a US model, will it play Japan region locked games? Uh you cannot put a uh Famicom disk system into an American NES. You can't put it into the original slot loading one. I think with a converter you can get it to work in a top loader. Oh. Yeah. How does it can it, it needs that weird serial port thing? Does I thought it I thought it just connects to the cartridge slot. I don't think so. No, it goes under. Yeah, it goes under, but then there's like a an attachment that goes into the cartridge slot. I think theoretically it can work in a slot loading NES, but you have to modify it. Yeah, that oh, black it box does go on top. top. It goes yeah. Under. yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought it went in the front thing. No. No. The front thing is for the zapper. Uh yeah. Anyway, uh, Tyler says, Bob, where do you find cheap Game Boys? Wanted to try my hand at Game Boy Color Mod Project, but having difficulty finding a Game Boy for under a hundred bucks. Uh, you can find a cheap one on eBay. Um, conventions too can be a good place. Conventions are definitely better. Um, look, uh, I'm hearing good things about Mercari and Yahoo Auctions. Um, but yeah, you can find it on eBay for... I mean, I could just look right now. How about Yahoo that? Auctions is like particularly popular in Japan for like mm -hmm. auction sites. So if you're looking for like import stuff, that's a good place to go. There, I mean, there are, I just, I just fucking found one, 56 bucks. Well, it's, it's, it's a bid though. It ends in 15 minutes, $56. Hurry up. Hurry up. Um, yeah, you might have to bid on it. Here's one, forty-one dollars. It's a bid though, so you can get one. You could probably win one of the. Oh, here's buy it now, sixty bucks. Tested, discolored shell. Who cares? You're gonna fix yeah. it up anyway. You could probably realistically on eBay get something for around sixty, sixty-five dollars, mm -hmm. uh, even if you bid for it. So, uh, do that. Uh, Bobby Beshi says, Bobby boy, I just real recently discovered there's a Game Boy ROM for a Final Fantasy style Frasier game. Frasier Fantasy. What's the easiest way for me to get that ROM onto an actual playable Game Boy cartridge? It's called the GB... Hold on. It's called an EBX or something? Game Boy Color Cartridge. Oh, it's on itch.io. It's a Game Boy Color style game. They have they have a Game Boy GB Pro Plus. It's only twenty five dollars. Okay, on Amazon. Um, the one that I have is called something different, but it, it's literally a Game Boy Color cartridge that has a micro SD card slot, and you put the ROM on there, and you just put it in, and that that's that's the easiest way mm -hmm. to get a game playing on original hardware. Um. 
I guess I'll look at my old orders. Uh, Mecca Luigi says, I like Power Wash Simulator, and now I'm offended. <laughs> I heard, hey, I hey, heard look, the game. I've heard good. it's good. I've heard it's good. And The Playground says, you haven't been able to upload levels for a while. You won't be able to upload levels after the shutdown. Uh, that's about um, Mario Maker and Mario Maker. Wii U shutting down. Yeah. I do want to jump in right before the the walls come crumbling down, though. Mm-hmm. The, the cart reader that I have is called the EDGB Pro, and I bet you can find it on AliExpress or something. Uh, but just any cartridge that has a micro SD card slot would probably work fine. You found the Fraser game? I found it. It's on itch.io. He, he gives you the Game Boy Color ROM and an analog pocket version of it. So uh, maybe it's a little better. Maybe, maybe. it's got some more juice. I'm going to download it. both. And the soundtrack. Why not? Give me that 8-bit tossed salad and scrambled decks. Oh my god, here it is. Run Gateway. Can you play it in the browser? Yeah. You can play it in the browser. There you go. That's amazing. Restore game. Oh my god. All right, I have to I have to watch this video now. Oh my god. Amazing. All right, we're in the chat. Make yes. it quick. I got food waiting for me. I'm hungry. Uh, flea markets and garage sales are some places you might get lucky. Yeah. The best deal I got was at Too Many Games. Somebody just had a box of untested Game Boys that they were right. willing to part with for very cheap. Do you think Nintendo would spend money on their new console being 4K or will they go cheaper route and just go max 1080p? I think it's possible we see a 1440p Nintendo console. Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo not that they, you know, not that they're cheaping out, but like historically they've like gotten the most out of like less expensive hardware. Yeah, you and know? and they will do that again. Yeah. Cuz that works really well for them. I broke down and pre-ordered an Odin 2. You getting one of these? I pre-ordered it. I'm in a heated fight between uh, me and uh, Ayn over the Lokis, plural, that I ordered a long time ago Yeah, uh, and still have yet to see. I... Over the weekend, I emailed Ayn and I said, any updates on my Loki? And they responded... With a bill for eleven dollars, <laughs> and they said, "Yeah, uh, you owe us an eleven dollar difference between like all of the." They have. I ordered two devices from them, mm-hmm. and both SKUs were removed from existence. Right, and they didn't just give me the comparable SKU; they wanted me to pick the compare. I was like, "What's the comp- just give me the." Yeah. That happened three times, I think. Uh, and finally, I was, I was, I was like, "Where the fuck is it, dude? It, mm-hmm. It's been out for a while. Where is mine? I pre-ordered it when it was announced, and I still don't have it. Um, and you're announcing all of these other devices. Where's the one that I ordered? So, uh, yeah, I asked them, "Where is it?" For the third time, I asked, "Where is it?" And they said, "Here, give us eleven dollars for the difference between the two. Which they could have told me before, right? And then they w- and then the website wouldn't let me give them eleven dollars. The uh, PayPal and my credit cards were just failing out, and I was like, "It's not working." And they're like, "Well, other people are doing it, fine." And I was like, "All right, here's a video of it not working. Yeah. I don't know what more you want from me." And then they sent me a different link, and that worked like the, a, a different mechanism to give them eleven dollars. Um, so now I'm just waiting still for that. Also, another battle I had over the weekend was I emailed uh, Ascaso, who makes my espresso machine, and I said, yeah. they're supposed to be sending me a box. I said, "Where's any updates on where the box is? And then they sent me uh, an order confirmation and a shipping thing. And they're like, sorry for the delay. Here it is. It's coming. So they didn't even order the box. Right. 13 days ago, <laughs> they didn't do anything. Yeah. So now I'm finally getting the box that I have to then ship my espresso machine out in. Yeah. 
So it's been a fun weekend with uh, dealing with all these fucking people. I had an Amazon order say it was delivered and it wasn't delivered. And I reached out to them about it. And first they said, oh, it might just be delayed. Contact us tomorrow. And so I did. And they're like, oh, it's still coming. Contact us later. Like, so I did. I'm like, oh, it's still coming. Contact us later. So finally, I'm like, it's not coming. Refund me my money. Yeah. Okay. I had that happen to me a few times at my apartment. And yeah. every time it was fine. Except for once, I ordered a mixer, like one of these guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I ordered a new one of these. And uh, it was pretty expensive. And it wasn't there. It just never showed up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I went to Amazon. I was like, Hey, it never showed up. And they're like, Oh, this is from a third party seller. So you have to take it up with uh, them. So I took it up with them. And they're like, no, we're not refunding you because yeah. it was expensive and we don't can't guarantee that you're not just keeping it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, this has never happened before. Yeah. You know, it's weird that it just doesn't show up. And then I saw a guy from my building. <laughs> he would, what he would do is, mm-hmm. Instead of taking his keys for the, because you know you need to like boop it to get yeah, into yeah. the building, he would uh, walk outside, take a package, wedge it in the door, <laughs> and then run to the bodega and then come back. Oh god! So he probably took my Zoom mixer, yeah, put it in the door, ran to the bodega, and then somebody got a brand new yeah. Zoom mixer. So I didn't deserve a refund for that, but yeah. I do uh, want four hundred dollars from that man. <laughs> anyway, I remember I bought a ton of stuff. I added up to a hundred dollars, and I wasn't sure where it was. So they made me have a file to file a police report. Oh my god! Jeez. I think that's what happened. And I was like, no, I don't want to get yeah. the police involved. I'll just eat the money. Uh, Dark Spider Dave, was it the McFarlane Batman movie six pack? No. It was, uh, there was an action figure in it though, but it wasn't that much. It was only like a $30 purchase. Um, so no, it wasn't that. Uh, however, Todd, if you're watching, if you want to just send me that, <laughs> our PO box is somewhere on the page. We, we, we know that Todd is a big Wolf Den podcaster. Yeah. Bob, what are you playing on that TV? It's obviously Zim in a shark with a shark fin and, and sunglasses surfing. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the surf shark dog. The surf shark You've dog. You've seen him on TV. Yeah, yeah. You've <laughs> seen him on TV. Here he is. Um. Anyway, that we're we're uh, we're 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 done here. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitchtv Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all. We always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast, so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also on audio podcasts and services like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Music is apparently now what it's called. Uh, but no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on any and all respective platforms. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. I'm going to stream Mario Wonder hopefully on Thursday. I hope. Mm-hmm. And my plan is to blind speed run the whole game. <laughs> uh, but uh, I might, if I have time, I would like to check out uh, Sonic Superstars. Yeah. Which is out right now. Uh, so I might stream that tomorrow. But uh I don't know if I'll have time to do that. I want to play both those games, but I know spider Man's going to eat up a lot of my time. So that comes out Friday, right? Yeah. Okay. I also, I'm going to play that, but I don't know when I'm going to play that. Um, Any notifications? I always miss the end notifications. Funyuns are tasty. Thank you for the eight months. I disagree, but I'll thank you for I'll take your word for it. I haven't eaten a Funyun in God knows how long. Uh, go watch Jess. She is playing Sonic Superstars. Woo! And I will see you uh, maybe tomorrow, definitely Thursday. Uh, bye. Bye.